family's injury certainly was a setback. But the bond that these two kids have is really strong. And although only one of the heartbreak kids was out there in the second half, Tommy's spirit was with him, and I believe... You hear from Mr. Matthews? The hoodie gave it away? He's stable. But we're only allowing family to go back right now. That's great, because he's my brother. I'm proud of what he's accomplished this season. I think there's only one individual on everyone's mind tonight. This one is for my brother, Tommy Matthews. Tommy. You think that's something? <laughs> you should see it in person. <laughs> oh, man. That's so cool. Uh, uh. Oh, thanks so much for coming and bringing this. You kidding me? I wouldn't miss this for anything. Coach and the guys sent their best. They waited as long as they could, but no one knew when you might wake up, so they had to catch their flights back. I told Coach I wasn't about to split up the heartbreak kid, so I stayed behind. Make sure you're all right. Thanks, man. I'm just glad you're here. But hey, they did leave you the trophy. They wanted to make sure you had it when you woke up. How are you feeling, buddy? <sighs> like a sack of crap. It's funny, because that's exactly what I was going to say you look like. <laughs> hey, man. Promise me one thing. Anything. That you'll come back next year and make it win the championship together. Next year? You know I will, brother. Together. <clears throat> Doc said I shouldn't overdo it. She said what caused all this? Yeah, something about the stress from my filthy roommate leaving his dishes lying around the apartment. She said if it weren't for that, I'd be the pinnacle of health. Please. <laughs> hey, seriously. You gotta start cleaning up after yourself. It's ridiculous. Really? Right now? Is that him? He's an hour early. Coach? Don't look too disappointed. No, no, I was just expecting Tommy. Come in. Care for a cupcake? No, thanks. So, you here for the party? No, give me a minute. Okay, Coach. Actually, I'm, uh... We had to talk to you about next season. Yeah, sure, talk away. It was, uh, it was something you said at the, uh, at the start of the season earlier. It really stuck with me. It's... Something good, I hope? Well, it was something you said about treat your men like your beloved sons and I'll follow you into the deepest valley. And that really got me. It got me thinking about the way I treat you boys, and, and I wasn't being fair to you, and Tommy, for that matter, or the team. Wow, Coach, I really appreciate that. All that being said, I, I wanted to go into the offseason with everyone on the same page. I figured the best way that we could do that would be to announce a starter. Tommy's gonna be our starter. But how could you possibly make that decision after the title game? Is Tommy even gonna be able to play? Yeah, I spoke with his doctor. Uh, valve replacement surgery was great. He's gonna be right as rain. Just don't understand. I know this is hard for you. It's, it's hard for you to process, and, and I hope you believe me when I say that I take no joy in making this decision. But I stand firmly behind it because, frankly, Tommy's a better fit for the offense. Well, what does this mean for me? Well, it, uh, it means 
that you are at a monumental crossroads in your life and you've got two choices. You can enter the draft, and based on what you did last year, I'd say you'd be lucky to get picked in the third round. But realistically, you're looking at a late round selection, if at all. Jeez, don't sugarcoat it for me. Well, I'm trying to be open and honest with you from this moment forward. I'm giving it to you as I would my own beloved son. And my other choice? By the way, I see it, you got too much raw athleticism to waste sitting on the bench. Your talent is a true gift. And it's one that I'm gonna give you the opportunity to show it to the world. And how's that? You get to pick a new position on offense and get your heartbreak kids thing going back again. Heartbreak kids. I appreciate the faith, coach, but... If I'm gonna play QB at the next level, it seems like leaving now is my only shot. That's probably true. Wow. I did not expect all this to come to a head so soon. Well, anything you need, just call. And when those NFL coaches come calling, trust that I'll have your back. <laughs> I'm not sure what's more strange, that interaction or the general cleanliness of this apartment. Cupcake! So the NFL Combine, I spent so much time preparing for it. But some things you can't ever say you're fully ready for. That's how the week felt for me. I walked away from the press conference feeling a buzz. I said a lot of things, but would my performance back it up? Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, oh, this cannot be happening. Where was the last place you looked at him? If you knew where you last saw him, they wouldn't be lost now, would they? Yeah, thanks. Glad I help you are. Oh, oh, you, you're rich. Say it with me now, Eisen. Right, Eisen, you're rich, Eisen, big fan. <laughs> I'm going to be the laughing stock of your next broadcast, aren't I? Depends. You going to run the 40 barefoot? I may have a little fun with you, but don't worry. I won't make you a running joke, huh? Come on. I thought it was pretty good. Uh, maybe not your best, but tell you what. You let me wear your cleats. I'll laugh at any joke you have. I mean, seriously, I'm desperate. Try them on. See if they fit. What's the verdict? Um, perfect fit, but honestly, and I don't mean to sound ungrateful, but they're a little damp. Uh, they're like really damp. Did you go swimming in these? Thought you said you were a fan. If you were, then you'd know I just ran my annual Run Rich Run 40 for charity. Oh, right. Right. How'd it go? Let's just say my days of keeping up with Saquon Barkley are behind me. Maybe you'll fare better than I did out there. What was the time? 5.98, baby. <laughs> well, I can't do any worse. I've seen statues move faster than that. <laughs> All right. Well, I want you to go out there and post a time of at least 4.6. Think you could swing that? Of course, 4.6? I can do that barefoot. 
That sounds like a challenge to me. Less challenging now that I don't have to do it barefoot, thanks to you and your cleats. Now that is what I like to hear. You're going to be helping those kids at St. Jude more than you know. Go get them, champ. Hope those shoes bring you good luck and an even better 40 time. <laughs> thanks again, man. Whew. Yep, I feel it. Welcome to another exciting edition of the NFL Scouting Conference. I'm Rich Eisen, and I'll be your tour guide as we meet the next crop of elite NFL talent. We're going to start things off with my personal favorite, the event that can break the spirit of any man, the 40-yard dash. First up, we've got one half of America's darling, the Heartbreak Kids, an intriguing draft prospect to say the least. We'll see him up next for the skills portion of this year's NFL Scouting Combine. Had a little bit of it all. Select few guys who may have just cemented their place as one of the top picks in the upcoming NFL draft. Until next time, I'm Rich Eisen. Welcome to the 2020 NFL Draft. Sure, the experts have done 2.7 million mock drafts, but you can toss those babies out the window. And we're back in the fourth round of the draft. The talent herd is beginning to thin, but there are still some real studs out there. Hey, this is the offensive coordinator of the New York Giants. How you feeling right now? Oh, everything's great, coach. Well, look, son, we've been following you for quite some time, and we believe you could be an integral part of this team. Thank you, sir. Thank you so, so much. I can't tell you how much this means to me, and I'm ready to do whatever it takes to show you I'm worth your pick. <laughs> I know you will. I'll expect you to show up ready, okay? I'll be the first one there. Can't wait. And I'm just getting confirmation that the pick is in. Let's take it to the podium to see who the next pick in the draft is going to be. What a phenomenal pick. This kid has shown some elite abilities on the field. He's a freak athlete, totally capable of taking over a game in the right system. Let me explain what I did. 
head, can I kick it? Hold on. Yeah, I got some rings and a range. Can I kick it? Yeah. Don't ask me a thing. How I got her, how I did it. Yeah. Spend the whole half, had a blast. Can I kick it? Even with a spray. Pain, can I kick it? Just the flex, I went and bought a chain. Can I kick it? Things ain't been the same. Things have changed. Can I kick it? People acting. At your first training camp, who helped you adjust to NFL life? No matter how ready you think you are, nothing really prepares you for the big leagues. So I appreciated having him as a guide, but I didn't realize just how much impact it would have over the course of my rookie year, on and off the field. But we finally get to see at least one of our beloved Heartbreak kids in action on the field. Look, I'm a founding member of the Heartbreaker fan club, going all the way back to their high school days. So needless to say, I for one have been dying to see them step onto an NFL field and show everyone what they can do since we last saw them lighting the world on fire in the college ranks. But as excited as I and the rest of the Heartbreakers are to see them take the field, it's a moment we may all have to wait for until next season. The veteran players were encouraged to mentor the new guys on how to succeed and push us to be competitive, even in the preseason. I appreciated that he took me under his wing and our extra reps after practice helped me get dialed in. Their offense has been talking smack about us all week. All week. Let's go out here and have a good day so we can prove them wrong when it comes game time. you get better every week. You know what? Today you got better. Let's keep it up.
jersey. It's Thursday Night Football. Situated about eight miles west of New York City at MetLife Stadium in East Rutherford. A few moments ago, the crowd here was on their feet as their beloved Jets made their way out of the tunnel. They're ready to go. We're ready to go, and it should be a good one as those New York Jets get set to face off with that other team here in the metropolitan area, the New York Giants. Charles Davis alongside me, and I'm Brandon Gordon. And, folks, the wait is over. Yes, it's just the preseason, but football is back in your living room. And I'm excited. I know you are as well. The summer heat feels good on these old bones, especially because we're not putting out bats. We don't have to be out there in that heat running into other people. But I'm glad these guys are. Football is back. And that one will bounce out of the back of the end zone, so we will start here at the 25. For the USC product, Sam Darnold, the number three overall pick in 2018, ready to go. Here's the Jets take over on offense. Start with the option. And he's upended after a gain of two out to the 27. Bell, the ball carrier. They'll break the huddle, come up on second and eight at the 27 yard line. Well, sometimes as a running back, you've got to be able to improvise when the hole's not where you expect it to be. But in this case, there wasn't any improvisation that he could do that was going to work. Kind of like if you're trying to be a comedian on open mic night at the improv and you run into a tough crowd. An early tough test on the opening drive. This is third and eight. Darnold from the gun. Looking for Crowder, and it's intercepted. Picked off at the 33. And they are going to set up shop at the 32-yard line. At the First go on offense for the Giants under the guidance of Daniel Jones, the former Duke Blue Devil. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. On the ground, this is Saquon Barkley. Powering his way forward. And they have it in the red zone before he crosses over out of bounds. 13 yards, good for a giant first down. And that's the big fella's M.O. right there. Running through tackles, keeping the sticks moving forward. This defense, if you don't bring 11 guys to the ball to try and get him on the ground, he's going to keep making runs like that. I feel the press box shaking every time he touches the rock. It's Steve McClendon that time. He winds up getting him down. The run got four. Now they deal with a second and six. He takes us down to about the 12 for a gain of three. Saquon Barkley. Brandon, all things considered, they have to feel pretty good about getting that type of a gain considering the blitz that they just had against them. Third down. Jones from the gun on third down. And the Jets' defense making things difficult there. Fourth down. But that was certainly an aggressive call and an aggressive play. Instead of just going for the first down, took the shot in the end zone, went for the touchdown. And on third down, they said, forget about the sticks. We want six. 29 yards at down. And it's a fake. He's going to throw it. 
They pass up the three, fake it. It doesn't work. And the Jets are going to get the football back. Back at the 17. I see what they were trying to do there. You pop up your holder, roll him out. You got the option to run or pass. This didn't work. Not at all. And the communication was excellent defensively to make sure that receivers were covered as they escaped from the line of scrimmage because that's supposed to be a surprise to everyone, and that's how they get free. People forget their assignments on defense. That didn't happen. And think about the guy rolling out with the football, looking for an open person. No one there. Helpless feeling. Helpless because that gap between you and defenders now is going to close and close quickly. First down carry for Bell, but he'll work forward for only about a yard. Well, sometimes you just have to give credit to the defense. Great job there at the point of attack, holding up. They won their battles at the line of scrimmage, left him no space to try and run. A really nice job swarming to the ball carrier. Yeah, quick throw here, that's complete. That is catch number 300 now for his NFL career. And six. Throwing here on third down, Darnold looking for Perriman and it's intercepted. Picked off at the 46, and he's able to get it back to the 41-yard line. First quarter, and now he already has two interceptions. Yeah, he's got a guard against being tentative from this point forward, though. He's got to still make the right reads, make the proper throws. I've seen guys in this league throw four interceptions in a game and win. He's got to understand, put it behind you, keep pressing forward. Just what you want on a first down run. Call it eight yards, and it's second and two. Jones with a handoff to Barkley. And he's going to get this down close to a first at about the Jets 28. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. A gain of five. First throwing Jones. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. Fights through, and now a crease. And they will eventually get him down, but he's inside the five all the way to the three. Golden a really nice gain of 25 yards. three-yard line. And this was a nice example of an offensive coordinator scheming his guy open, just a little underneath route, just trying to free up some space, and it worked awfully well. Got him not just space, but plenty of room to run after the catch. To pick up. And he will take it on in. For a giant touchdown. Touchdown. A three-yard touchdown run. And the Giants are going to take a first-quarter lead. A strong, determined run there, Charles, to get in for six points. This is why it's such a team game, isn't it? And I know that sounds really generic, and it sounds almost trite. But the blocks were made up front, offensive line, collected victory at the line of scrimmage and downfield. And how about the finish to the run all the way into the end zone? Returnable here for Davis. Fights off the defender. And a good return, able to get out across the 35 to the 36. The Jets take over first and 10. Sam Darnold leading the offense out for their next possession. And he'll look to rebound from the early interception that led to six points the other way. And when he threw the interception and he had to come to the sideline, I guarantee his first thought wasn't about the interception itself, but what could result. And I know he was thinking to himself, come on, defense, bail me out. Well, they weren't able to in this situation. Now he's got to go out and atone for it himself, but he can't force things. Darnold going to lead the Jets up now, first and 10 at their 36-yard line. He'll throw from the gun. He's going to find his tight end. That's Chris Herndon. And they're going to have this across midfield and inside the 45. That good for 21 yards on the catch and run. Nice job there of utilizing his big target. He didn't overthink it. Understands the catch radius. Understands that he knows how to use his body to keep defenders away from the ball. And puts it right out there for the nice pickup. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. After one, seven, nothing on EA Sports. First quarter with the score, Giants seven, Jets nothing. From the 39-yard line, here comes second down at six. Flacco's throw there, complete. And he gets it down to the 32. Seven yards there and a first down. That's good for the Jets. First and 10 at the 32-yard line. The first carry for Josh Adams. And he's got this down almost to the 20 before he's dropped. 
about 10 yards is the pickup. Good enough for a Jet first down. For a lot of guys playing this game, there's no better feeling than running right through a tackle. He's able to lower his center of gravity and churn his legs for a really nice pickup. Once more, Adams on first down. And they'll get this down to the 10. 11 more on that one and another first down. He's a relentless a lot with guys who are aggressive on the field. In this case, it really fits, doesn't it? How about his ability to break tackles and his feet never stop moving. And running room hard to come by here. He gets it down to the eight. Two yards on the pick up there. It'll be second and eight. Brings up second and eight. A break from the ground game here. Flacco. Yeah, he's got it. And he takes this down to about the two before going out of bounds. Six yards is the pick up, and that'll lead to a third down. Third and one. They'll try and pick up the first down with Adams. And he's going to take it in for a Jets touchdown. Taking it in for two yards out. And the Jets are an extra point away from tying this thing up. But he decided to run it in and got it done on third and goal. A lot of times that's a passing play. And the kicker just has to come up for the PAT. He can breathe a sigh of relief as well, right? Although I don't know if he's really breathing a sigh of relief. I think he likes to put three points on his ledger. So I'll leave it at seven now as they kick it away. Fielded a couple yards into the end zone. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. Over first and 10 at their own 22-yard line. New York ready to go again offensively. And for them, a touchdown their last go around. Obviously, they'll be hoping to do that again. And when you start plotting for this drive, when you start thinking to yourself, okay, what are we going to do? You don't go away from what you did before because that worked, but you have to be prepared for wrinkles and counters because you know they'll make some adjustments. And they're able to get this one across the 35. Opted to run for it. The decision, a good one. Picking up the first, getting 14 yards on the scramble. With Charles in the past, a lot of people call this offense one-dimensional. I think you did. Well, I think it was you. I'll be honest, I did. <laughs> I think the fan base is hoping with this young rookie that they can put some wrinkles in this offense like we just saw. I think you're exactly right because we did have that discussion that what we've seen in the past from them, they needed to broaden, and they have done it here. Look at what he's bringing to their offense, and now as a defensive coordinator, you've got some extra work to do to prepare for him and their offense. Yeah, they're going to have this across midfield and inside the 45. That burst good for 20 and a first down. First down. They went with the nickel look defensively, so they had five defensive backs in there. Didn't help them stop the run. Yeah, I love that, the nickel look. Five cents, five DBs, but what also happens then? You take a big body off the field in order to insert that guy. So you're taking a big off for a little. And oftentimes you can run the football effectively against that defense. There's certainly a lot of quality receivers on this team, so he's no lock to make this squad. But the way he's got to do it, make every routine catch that comes his way and mix in some of the big time ones like the one we just saw there. Check in with Jonathan Coachman. He'll have a look back at our first half as well as a look ahead to what's coming up later this weekend. And incomplete, a drop there in the middle third of the field. That'll bring up second down. Over the middle, and it's incomplete. Feels like they're getting caught in between here because any completions on first and second down, now you got to worry a little bit about the clock because you prefer not to give another shot here in the first half. If you don't pick up the first deck. And that is caught. He's got it for a giant touchdown. Levine Toilolo there to make the grab. And the Giants have taken the lead. A little loft on that touchdown pass and sort of dropped it in the breadbasket perfectly. Right in the bucket. And when you're coming out of college and you're a rookie in the NFL, sometimes you forget about the different types of throws you have to make. You just rely on your fastball and throw it as hard as you can all the time. But in this situation, he understood and threw it in a spot where only his receiver was going to get it and no one else. That was pretty. Chandler Catanzaro lining up for the extra point. 
It took them an extra look, but they found out it is a touchdown indeed. The official says this one counts. The kick is and his kick is right through. That time, a six-play drive. And it was finished off by a touchdown by the New York Giants. Now Captain Zero after the touchdown to kick it away. Takes it at the seven. And a decent return out to the 27-yard line. The Jets take over first and 10 at their own 27-yard line. The Jets offense ready to go in this battle of New York. And that last touchdown drive they had very balanced. How key is that balance? It's huge because most of the time when we talk about balance is one pass, almost 50-50. But most of the times when you talk to offensive coaches, they say balance is we do what we want when we want to. And that means that they're ahead of the defense, keeping them on their heels. Yeah, they imposed their will on that last drive. Well, so far on this drive, they've done some good work. They forced incompletions on first and second down, bring up third and ten. That brings up the big question. Do they bring pressure or do they play coverage on this down? On third down, they go with Adams. And he won't be close to a first down as he runs into a wall right around the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there. A nice job defensively. And it likely forces a punt situation on forward. And he gets this away. And look at this. This is a good one. Looking up into the lights, and he muffs it. But fortunately, he's able to recover his own fumble, and that could have been trouble. on the return. The Giants. I know there's no magnet in the ball, but sometimes for the punt returner, after such a scramble, it sort of feels that way, doesn't it? He has it, he loses it. Somehow, the ball finds his way back to him. But atone for his sin, and you know he's taking a deep sigh of relief right now. Looking for more there on first down, but this throw downfield incomplete. He was looking for C.J. Board there, and now it's second down at the 21-yard line. He's got a man. It's Corey Coleman. Nine yards, not quite enough, and they'll be left now with third and one. Came up a little short on the last pass play. They did get nine yards out of it, leaving him with his third and one. He'll be taken down. The Jets get in there for the sack. The Jets are going to use the first of their timeouts as they stop it with 19 seconds to go in half number one. Fourth down, so on is the punter, Riley Dixon. And they're going to fake it from deep in their own territory. And he will not make it. They stop him short of the first down. A little trickeration there, but it doesn't fool them. And the Jets are going to get the football here in great field position. First and ten here for Flacco. Oh, he's now a hit, and Flacco drops the football. It's loose. Now a timeout taken. Perhaps a chance for one more quick play and then another timeout if they hurry. We'll see. The fumble on first down. Now here's second down. Flacco from the gun. And that is incomplete. Stopping the clock with five seconds to go. Denzel Mims, the rookie, the intended receiver there. And it's third down. So on third down, the field goal unit will come out as they'll try to get three before half. This is a 43-yard attempt. The kick by Moore is good. And they'll cut the lead back down to four now at 14-10. So, yes, they'll still be down going into intermission, but the deficit is now made even smaller, very manageable. Yeah, and if nothing haywire happens here in this last couple of precious seconds, they will go into the locker room with a nice bounce in their step, having gotten a little bit closer on the scoreboard. At their own 25-yard line. The other New York offense getting ready for their next drive. They'll try and start this drive in the air. He sets to fire deep, and that will be incomplete. Would have been a big hitter if they had connected. Instead, it's second down. So we have reached halftime in our first preseason matchup of the year. As we'll send you down the coast now to Orlando, that's where we find Jonathan Coachman ready with our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. Back to you guys in just a minute. 
as we've started the countdown to opening night. Three more weeks of preseason action follow this, and then we get it all started. Less than one month from tonight. In our game, most of the starters have made their cameo and departed, but plenty of youngsters out there with a lot to gain or lose as we get you right back out to Brandon God. Take it about seven yards deep. And they'll get him down right at the 25-yard line. So the same result, and he opted for the touchback. 25-yard line. And here comes the Giants offense back out onto the field. They have the lead now. They'll be looking for some separation here as we begin the third quarter. I like the way you term that because now I think they go a little bit deeper into their playbook. They like what they did in the first half. That worked okay. But in order to get the separation that you just talked about, change things up a little bit. Change your tendencies. Try and hit them a little bit more with some things they didn't see in the first half. Let's see if they do just that. They're throwing to start the drive, but that one incomplete. This has certainly been a physical game so far. Limited scoring opportunities for both sides. And there's another chance that goes unfulfilled. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. Now Lewis. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. It's a pickup of 17 and a first down. All right, I got to ask you, with these RPOs, essentially the quarterback has three options, right? So what's different from that versus the triple option that we see the service academies run at the college level? As a general rule, the triple option at the college level, most things are called outside of the quarterback faking it to the runner and then keeping it himself and maybe having a trail back. What I mean is, in the NFL, that option to throw the football all comes about organically. It's a natural deal based on reads. In college, if you're going to throw the football off a triple option, you've actually called that play. That's going to be knocked away and incomplete. Nate Hairston there defensively. Love the idea, love the concept, but you got to leave a little room on the sideline so you can fade into when he makes the catch. That was thrown too close to it for the receiver to make a play. Now a pass hauled in downfield. Down the numbers. There he goes. And all the way in. Touchdown, New York. C.J. Board, 58 yards. And the Giants add on to their lead. As a former DB, you might not like to see that, but from a wide receiver's perspective, those are the plays they dream of. Correct on both counts, all right? Because once he took off, Extra point up and good by Catanzaro, and that makes it a 21 to 10 game. Now Catanzaro after the touchdown to kick it away. This one fielded at the five, and he'll go down as this drive will start at the 25 yard line. At their own 25 yard line. Jets offense ready to go in this battle in New York. They'll look to make some inroads here, trailing 21 to 10 as they come up on a first and 10. Now the first play of the drive there is incomplete. Josh Adams, the running back, is intended receiver. And it's second down. Second and 10 at the 25-yard line. Operating out of the gun, Flacco. Griffin's got it, middle of the field. That'll leave them with a third and two coming up. They got eight yards there. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. And the giant rush gets home as down he goes. Oh, Shane Jimenez coming in to drop it for a loss of eight. And it also brings up fourth. Now, we talk about players blitzing all the time. I often laugh and sometimes call it just straight-ahead pursuit. 
a running start right back to the backfield for him. Yeah, it really didn't give anybody a chance to get up there and stop him. No, I mean, that's really, really difficult. You're asking a whole lot anyway, but when he gets that kind of start and comes through clean, Corey oftentimes the advantage the definitely goes to the defensive the player. There he is, the man taking the snaps under center, heading out for the next possession. He's played well. Good first half. He's continued that here in the third quarter. But my question, when you're a head coach, what do you look at stat line-wise for your Do you go right to turnovers? You really do. As much as coaches don't want to talk about that, that's where it starts. When I played in college, our first rule for every game, the team making the fewest mistakes will win. And that's kind of how they judge you. Do you take care of the ball, not turn it over, keep it in the proper hands, and give your team a chance to win? Well, that's what he's done here in this one so far. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. He was 10 yards, good for a giant first down. It's a Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think they had three tight ends in on that set. And these guys are punching really well. I use boxing analogies a lot. A lot of coaches have told me that when you line up to run the football, it's 10 fist fights along the line of scrimmage, right? You've got to win your share. These three tight ends, they almost always win their fist fights. First down, Giants. Here's a play fake as they set up to throw. They'll get this one into the hands of Lewis. And he'll be out of bounds as he gets this down about the 21 or 22. They'll contain him to just four. Second down. They toss right to Lewis. Try to bounce it outside, but he's only able to get it back to the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there, so they're left with a third down and six. If this defense wants to stay in this ball game, they've got to start ending some drives. That helps. And they have to look ahead at what they expect the offense to do. And right now with that lead, that's run the football. So you don't just stack the line of scrimmage. You have to get upfield and try and make some plays in their backfield. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Great mix of play calling so far. Three runs, three passes. All three passes have been completions. First and goal. I think on defense now, you have to almost take a chance. Rely on your scouting. Pick a play you think they would run here and just load up for it and see what happens. Nice work to get seven out of that, and it's second down. Brings up second, and then he will take it on in for a giant touchdown. Levine Toilolo. Ready for the regular season with his second touchdown of the game. And the Giants are able to grow their lead. And remember, partner, that's a rookie quarterback back there. Apparently, he's getting the hang of this NFL thing pretty quickly. That three touchdown passes. You're right. He looks comfortable. What are they doing? Anything in particular? Well, they keep talking about making sure they're giving him plays that fit his talents and also maybe shrinking the playbook a little bit. They did tell us that. Bottom line, he's really good. And they're able to up the lead by one more. So that drive goes eight plays. And it was polished off by a Giants touchdown. Now Captain Zero after the touchdown to kick it away. And he brings us out past the 20 to the 24. The Jets take over first and 10 at their own 24-yard line. The Jets offense ready to go in this battle of New York. And with this deficit, you can't have too many more drives like the last drive where you had to punt it away. You know what I would tell my offense right here? The punter doesn't exist, guys. He doesn't even exist. He's not a team anymore. I just cut it, all right? So you've got to go out and create some offense for us here and give us some points. No way does that guy get on the field on those drives. Poor punter. Yeah, he, it, it wasn't his fault. But so, hey, listen, if something happens, there's going to be casualties at times. We're trying to win a game. The Jets on third down. Just one for five to this point. This time they face a third and two. Giants 28, Jets 10. From the gun, Flacco. And this is going to be incomplete. At this point in the game, they've got to continue to try anything they can. They're still working at it, even though this one feels like a lost cause. They're going to try it. Here's Flacco. Blitz coming, and down he goes. The Jets try it, but the fourth down play doesn't work. And the Giants are going to take over in great field position. 
Well, at this stage of the game in the second half, down three scores, I guess they felt like they needed to push. And let's face it, with this deficit, if they give up another score here after they didn't get it, does it really matter? Right. It really doesn't. They had to go and try and make something happen if they had any chance of winning this game. Down. No gain on the play there. Second down. No gain on the play. Second and ten. And they're rolling that right. Flushed out right. And he's going to keep it here. And they do get him down, but not before he's able to slip it inside the five-yard line. Able to find a lot of empty space there, picking up the first down at a 21-yard gain. We've seen the pressure get to him several times in this game. There, though, we see him escape it. And we've seen this rookie video before as well. That type of pressure, oftentimes, what do you resort to? Your legs try and escape. What you hope is that this doesn't become habit for him, that he learns how to handle the pressure, still keep his eyes downfield, and make some throws. And they've got three tight ends here on first and goal to add some extra mass. This is Lewis. And he will push his way forward down to about the three-yard line. It's a gain of a yard, and it'll set up second and goal. That run didn't get very far, and I think when you're looking at his dimensions, he's a little bit on the smaller side. He's counting on the big guys up front to escort him in, and they couldn't create any kind of space for him, could they? And down he goes. Pressure gets him back at the 14. When you're this close to the goal line, you got to expect pressure from the defense, so the ball's got to come out fast. Got to get out of his hands quicker. He hits his target. It's the tight end, Toilolo. And he's brought down just outside of the 10 at the 11. A four-yard pickup, not enough. Fourth down. One hallmark of good defenses is understanding the game, understanding positioning, and tackling immediately in the secondary after catches. I think we just saw that on display right there. Got to him before he ever had a chance to think about turning it upfield. Wiggles free. The fake field goal catches everyone by surprise. And the Giants are able to add on to their lead. They had the lead in the fourth, but still passing. Finding the big target for the touchdown. Now that lead grows even more. Everybody gets to join in the fun. You know, it doesn't have to just be the wide receivers catching touchdown passes. The tight end doesn't just have to do just the dirty work inside. He gets a chance to get to the end zone as well. And he's been a busy man, five for five now, as he knocks another one through to extend the lead. So the drive there took six plays, and it was finished off by a touchdown by the New York Giants. Now Captain Zero after the touchdown to kick it away. Fielded right around the 80. And he'll be tackled just shy of the 25. Take over first and 10 at their own 24-yard line. And New York set to take the field. And certainly this, not the performance that they were hoping for to begin the exhibition season, but still plenty to watch for in this fourth quarter. Flacco and the Jets now with a first and 10 at their own 24. From the gun, he'll set up to throw. Looking middle, and it's incomplete. Well, it just seems like all game long, there hasn't been a lot of sync quarterback to wide receiver on this side of the football. They haven't been on the same page, quarterback and receivers. Now a hit, and Flacco drops the football. It's loose. And who's got it? The Giants. You know, if this is the regular season partner, we'd be talking about just how costly a mistake that was, but probably good for him to get it out of his system right now. Just hope for him and the team it's not a sign of things to come. Yeah, without a doubt. Plus, got to worry about making the team. Those types of errors don't help you. And he will take it on in for a giant touchdown. A nine-yard touchdown run. And the Giants use the short field to their advantage as they cash in for six. 
That touchdown, Charles, the first rushing TD of his rookie year. I don't know that he's going to be Lamar Jackson or Russell Wilson or Josh Allen at this stage of his career, but he's got youth on his side. Those young legs, he put them to good use there, didn't he? back out there to boom this one away maybe with some frustration after the PAT miss taking it about the one and good coverage there on special teams as he'll get him down shy of the 20 the Jets take over first and 10 at their own night so out now come the Jets and this showing really not a good one on either side of the ball but still three more preseason games to follow and a lot to play for here for the guys on the field now as they're hoping to secure that roster spot. And up to the 35 before they're able to knock him down. Well, they may want to go back to that one. First play of the drive, good for 15 and a first down. At the 35-yard line. To pass, Flacco toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. He was trying to get it to Denzel Mims that time. And that'll bring up second down. Another pass attempt, another incompletion. You, you figure defensively, you're in the fourth quarter here, you've held the team under 100 yards passing. You've done your job. Especially in today's NFL, which is truly a pass-first league. Nine yards, and that leaves him just short, so it'll be third and less than a yard. Flacco to throw here on third down. And some room to run now. And this one will be returned to right around the 38-yard line. The utter domination here just continues. This defense, I don't know what more we can say all around about their performance. It certainly feels, in this game, like maybe they're facing a Canadian defense. 12 guys on the field. It feels like there's an extra on every snap because they have really struggled to make headway through the air. So it's Giants football here as we welcome you back. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. He'll get the first down and more inside the 20. And he's all the way down to the 13-yard line. A gain there of 21 yards. Well, that's a carry they have to be satisfied with. And throughout this game, they've been satisfied with what he's given them. Whenever they've needed a big run, a first down, he's the guy they've turned to. And it doesn't matter what the defense thinks. They feel like they've got the confidence to keep handing it to him and keep picking up good yardage. Yeah, give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. just about a minute left in this game and they're still taking it to the end zone and you know they could have taken a knee there but they decided to play this one all the way out and I think their philosophy is we're going to give you everything we've got if we just go ahead and take a knee now we're actually showing you disrespect that way like taking pity on you they're not about to do that to their opponent Zero after the touchdown to kick it away. An incredibly short kick fielded way up there. And they've got it up past the 35, so pretty good starting field position. At their own 30. The Jets offense ready to go in this battle of New York. They've lost this one. Their offense has struggled. Do they try to put together something here at the end just to take into next week? Well, sometimes teams want to do that and coaches want to. I remember one time I was on a team and we were losing late in the game like this, and you knew it was lost. It was over, right? And the coach called a running play and pretty much said to everyone, I want to see something executed well before we get out of here. And that was the message to the team. Just something to build on. Just something to build on, get it done, and maybe we can look at that and say, we'll get better as we go forward. And that will be in. 
incomplete with a clock showing 18 seconds now to go. That's an excellent job right there on third down. Like any defense, you never want to let them get anything started, and that would have been a first down. Instead, you saw the contact on time, no penalty, and before this drive could get wings, it's fourth down. And problem spreading to the punt team now. This one goes all the way into the end zone on the fly, so that'll come back to the 20. The other New York offense getting ready for their next drive. He's going to loft one deep left side here. And that's caught inside the 30. And he takes it all the way down to the 28-yard line. A big play that time through the air. 52 yards. Well, in overtime, I think Coach is always wondering where's that magic line for my kicker. They're already in field goal range after that big play. I'm glad you brought that up because that magic line can change throughout the game. It's constantly being updated by teams. It starts with pregame. Okay, how, for, how do you feel? As the game goes on, they might ask him again. Still feel that same number? Is it a different number? Right hash, left hash, what do you need? And that goes into the play calling in OT. So that'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our crew. I'm Brandon Gaughton. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. So long, everybody. With a good first preseason matchup under my belt, coach called me into his office. I was hoping for good news. I tried to come to terms with the fact that my view for the rest of the year would be from the sidelines and not the line of scrimmage. But life has a way of surprising you sometimes. This is the player card. Here you can see your strengths and weaknesses by looking at your archetype ratings. This is your development trait. Superstar and superstar X-Factor players will progress faster over time. You can improve your development trait by being one of the top performers in the league at your position.